Okay, so my first question is not really a question. It's a confession. I like Korean dramas. You do? I've seen my lovely Sam Soon twice. Are you serious? I swear. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it twice. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to cut that out, though. I'm just going to edit that That's, out. It's nice to meet someone who actually yeah, appreciates no, it. They have, some, they have really great stories. Yeah, it is. They, yeah. It's like people don't want to admit that they're good stories, the Korean They're good stories, right? yeah, and they they're kind of like addicting. So, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they yeah. I, I get it, man, totally. So, so you, you've been doing the Korea, U.S., and now you're in Shanghai. So has this been a conscious decision for you to kind of work different film industries? It's a conscious decision for me to... to um, maintain a presence with the Asian market, you know, make sure we do films that are, are pressing stereotypes and, and trying to, you know, films that are more risky and doing characters that I can, you know, like in Shanghai Calling, where you just don't see that every day, you know, with that kind of amazing supporting cast around an Asian actor, you know, and that's what I love about the film. So I definitely think about it, you know, but uh, to be honest with you, I did just kind of fall into this one, thanks to Janet, our wonderful producer, they came and found me, but uh, I do think about it, yeah. So did you learn any Chinese? I learned, uh, Fang Pi, which is farts, and I learned, um, of course I learned like Ni Hao, Ni Hao Ma, like all that stuff, like, you know, Xie Xie Bu Kutsi, all that, like thank you, the, the basics, but I spent my last six years trying to learn Korean, and uh, after you spend six years, after you're 25, trying to learn a language, trying to process a new language is like, yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, I know, I, I know you're... I saw how good your Korean was in the Korean. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. Yeah. Good. Good. So, uh, so Janet actually, they actually approached you about doing the film. They came looking. They came. I had a, a brutal, brutal audition session, like two hours long, where they took me through every scene, and they sat back there with their arms crossed like this, like, "Is he our guy?" And I said, "You know, I just went for it, and uh, it was amazing." And then they casted me, and uh, we ended up in China, working our butts off together. Okay, so if they took two hours, then they didn't watch Father and know that you could really deliver a good acting they role. They didn't. Apparently, you did. They did. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, seen it. yeah. Well, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Seen it. Well, this was a new thing for me because this is comedy, yeah. and it was something I wanted to try really, you know, for a long time, and I never had the chance to uh, try real comedy, and it's not easy, you know. So Daniel, our director, worked in comedy for a long time, and he was kind of more like, can this guy deliver the jokes type thing, because we need to be able to watch him through the whole film, and, you know, it was a, it was a compliment when he said that uh, I got the parts. I knew he wasn't, uh, it wasn't an easy thing for him. Was that your first time in Shanghai, actually? No, I've been back and forth. When you work in Asia, it's quite small, so you know we do events there and things. But for a production, that was my first time. So um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your character, because I know he starts out in New York, doesn't he? I haven't seen the film yet. He uh, he's a Chinese American lawyer. He's in New York, working for a firm on the brink of a promotion. Excuse me. What he thinks is a promotion, and uh, he gets shipped off to China to follow their biggest client and makes every single mistake you can possibly make and despite what he wants to do, ends up using the locals and the American expats to help him out of trouble. And in the meantime, learns about love and relationships. And it's kind of like, you know, in the vein of a Doc Hollywood, you know, and, but, uh, you know, for me, there's not enough of those films anymore. So it was a pleasure to see like a, a very lighthearted film with a good message, you know, a nice rom-com, yeah. And, and uh, I, I know from, because Janet said that they're gonna be actually releasing the film in China too. So uh, I assume you're gonna go back to China and promote it as well? I think so, we're heading to the Shanghai uh, Film Festival probably in June, I believe. And that will be very interesting because it's, it's always nice to see how different audiences react to it. You know, there's a lot of American humor in the film and our concern was that the Chinese audiences wouldn't pick up on it. So, we're hoping that we included enough in a 50-50 sort of way that all audiences can respond and, and get, get something out of the film. And while we mostly have a, uh, an English language audience, we do have a Yuku page, so we'll post it there and promote the Shanghai Film Festival too. So uh, you also have, didn't I see something about Point Break being a remake or something? That was a rumor. That was a rumor. Oh, that's, not, that's not happening. I was oh. actually in talks for that, but you know, what happened was, because Patrick passed away, yeah. and he was, uh, originally the script was, he was playing my father, and so we kind of had oh, to, wow. yeah, so I was really excited about it, I was a big fan. That would have been amazing, really, yeah. I so, was training and everything for it already. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, the other thing, you know, you're like probably on our top ten list of like, people, can you interview this person, so, the other thing is, uh, what about Agent Zero, does he come back to life? If I had my way, he would be, he'd be alive and well, but the helicopter crash really screwed him up, let's be honest. But uh, they're doing Wolverine now, and you know, the thing about that film was that it was an Origins film. So, if you think about it, you know, everything takes place kind of like, that was in the past. So every, he, he could still be alive now, depending on which direction they go. And it's a Marvel movie, so you never know. 
So that's what you're hoping. So we're plugging. Okay. <laughs> so uh, where do you go from here with Shanghai Calling after this? Because this is the premiere. So and I know it's playing at uh, LA Asian Pacific Film Festival, which we'll be at too. So and then where do you go from there with it? Well, we've been accepted to the Stony Brook Film Festival in the Hamptons and also the, the biggest uh, the Asian Film Festival in New York City in July and also Shanghai Film Festival in June. So we've got uh, a lot on our plates and plus, uh, you know, other projects as well. So uh, a lot to do with this film and it just keeps uh, picking up momentum. So we couldn't be happier. This is Daniel Henning giving a shout out to Asians on Film.